Nightmares are a common ail we all tend to face at some point or another in our lives. They can range from just being somewhat of a nuisance to taking over our nights and disrupting our sleep. While there are a handful of causes for nightmares, sometimes it reaches a point where magical intervention is necessary. Recently on my Patreon, I received a comment asking for a ritual or a spell or just a magical practice to help end nightmares, and it got me thinking. Personally, I have done a handful of things in my life to really kind of banish these bad dreams. And so when this question came up, I decided why not take the time to combine a few things, taking some elements of a banishing ritual and some sleep aids and just see what happens. And I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. It is definitely a little bit more of a invested practice than what I usually share, but it's one that I am very, very pleased with and I think will work wonders for a lot of you who are struggling with nightmares. Often nightmares are caused by outside stressors or personal upheaval, among many other issues. In these cases, it's important to address the outside factors along with the energy that is being trapped. So, as with most things of this nature, there can still be work to be done beyond the spell. I've personally found that when nightmares become a consistent problem, it's important to include the space in my workings and clear out all the negative and stagnant energy that may be trapped and worsening the issue. While there can be other influences, this ritual will act broadly as kind of a catch-all for nightmare causes and should work in the majority of cases. This ritual is best done during the waning or dark moon, and I'd recommend working on a sunny or windy day, but rainy will work as well. And ultimately, you can do this ritual anytime it is needed, but these just kind of add a little bit of extra oomph to the ritual itself. There are about three elements roughly to this, and there is a fourth that you're welcome to add if you wish to. It begins with cleansings and purifications, along with a bit of protection, and then ends with a spell bag, plus a cup of optional tea, if you so wish. To complete the ritual, you will need a handful of ingredients, which I will share in a moment, and I will have everything listed down below. There are quite a few, and I have chosen every single one for very specific purposes that I will outline in the description down below and talk about the whys and hows throughout this video. As with all of my spells and rituals, this is an outline and you are welcome to change things up where you see fit, whether you uh, don't have access to certain ingredients or you feel like something will work better. Ultimately, I would like to say though, with something like this that has so many uh, specific reasons of use. I would really pay attention to that if you are exchanging any ingredients if you want the spell to uh, pan out the same way. There are certainly areas that you can adapt and change that won't influence it very much, but there are a few key ingredients that I would really recommend and I will discuss that as we go through. For this ritual you will need a bundle of cedar, lemon peels, lavender and chrysanthemum, along with some elder, rosemary, chamomile, thyme, and ginger. You'll also need a spray bottle and a cloth bag. Make sure to cleanse these components. Some of these ingredients will be used multiple times over, and some may need to be exchanged depending on your circumstances. For example, the cedar will be used in a smoke cleanse, but if you are unable to complete that, the cedar will be put in place of the chrysanthemum in another working. You'll also see that lavender and lemon will find their way into more than one piece of this ritual. Alrighty, with all that out of the way, let's get into it. First, we'll start with a cleansing and borderline banishment. This is one of the most important things to a banishing ritual and a lot of these elements I've utilized when I've had to do full home banishments, but in this case, we will just be paying attention to the bedroom or wherever you're sleeping. I will say I did film this in my regular workspace here just because it is the most comfortable for me to do that here. So don't let that confuse you. Do this in your bedroom and you're welcome to do this throughout your entire house if you feel the energy is stagnant everywhere, but of course with nightmares we're focused where you are sleeping. Also, apologies, you can absolutely hear my dogs playing in the background, but anyways. Begin by opening all of the windows and doors. In the room I'm in, the windows don't actually open, so I can only really open the blinds for video purposes but I would really recommend getting some fresh air circulating if you can. You're also welcome to open the cabinets and drawers if you feel that that is necessary. Say the energy is just feeling really, really stuck or uh, really heavy and negative. 
This is something I do when doing a full-blown banishment. I will open everything in my house and just not allow for any nooks and crannies for energy to get trapped. For nightmares, depending on the severity and how long it's been impacting you, you may not have to do this, but just put that out there for those of you feeling like there is a really a big issue going on. Once you have everything opened up and airing out, begin going through with a smoke cleanse of cedar. Personally for this, I like to start in the center of the room and start my way working around clockwise, kind of expanding the circle as I go out, making sure to hit every point, corner, nook and cranny in the room with the smoke. The smoke of cedar is purifying, and it's also known to help aid in getting rid of nightmares. So it is the perfect choice for this cleansing, and I would really, really recommend including cedar in this space. Now, of course, if you can't use uh, cedar for a smoke cleanse, I would recommend adding that to the next practice that I will share, and I'll get into that in a moment where you will do an exchange. But if you can do a smoke cleanse, they really do have a great kick, and I would recommend that if possible. But of course, not possible for everyone, so let's jump in the next piece. This next piece you will be doing if you do the smoke cleanse as well. It is additional and really kind of helps to seal that purifying, cleansing energy that you've given, and it also adds more of a protective element as well. Like I said, if you can't do the smoke cleanse, that is perfectly okay, but I would make a little change in this if you were not able to. Allow the space to continue airing out while you gather the ingredients for the next step. For this next piece, we'll be crafting a purifying spray. Personally, I wouldn't do a banishing spell without adding a spray. I think it really helps to uh, solidify what you've done with a smoke cleanse and just hit all of the places you may have missed. It also kind of helps to bring down the smokiness in the air after a while and just uh, settle some of that energy in the space. To craft this, start by gathering some lemon, lavender, and chrysanthemum flowers, along with a heat safe bowl. Lemon is one of my go-to purifying herbs. It works wonders and I wouldn't dream of doing a spell like this without it. I also find that it helps to add a bright happiness to the space, which is a lovely addition. Lavender ties to purification, protection, and sleep. All wonderful powers to bring to this element of the ritual, and it's also one of my main go-to herbs for sleep struggles. Then chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum is incredibly protective, and I find it important to bring protective energy to a spell after a cleansing. However, as I said before, if you are unable to perform the smoke cleanse, I find cedar to be a far more important addition to the ritual and would exchange it here as it also carries powers of protection. Chrysanthemum is very useful, but I find that the cedar is far more beneficial for this circumstance. Start by peeling your lemon. You'll need about three good pieces. Add the lemon peels to the bowl along with some of the juice as well. Then add a good pinch of each of the lavender and chrysanthemum flowers. Spend a moment mixing the herbs together, working to infuse your intent. Then pour some boiling water on top, allowing it to steep for a few minutes. While you're waiting for it to steep, gather some of your other tools that you'll need to complete this process. A spray bottle and I would recommend a funnel if you have one. Once the herbs have steeped for some time, take the lid off and allow them to cool a bit. You'll see that the flowers have lost their color at this point and kind of bloomed a bit. Make sure it's cool enough that you can touch it without being burned before you pour it into the bottle. Oh, and I almost forgot you'll also need a mesh strainer. Once the liquid is at the right temperature, gather all your tools and pour the liquid into the bottle. It's okay if it's a bit messy.
Once it's all made up, go ahead and follow the same protocol as the last step, going in a clockwise motion around the room, expanding out and spraying every bit that you can. After this is complete, it's time to move on to the next step. Close all your windows and doors and drawers and cabinets if you have them open, and then begin gathering the ingredients to craft a spell bag. For the spell bag, I used elderberries and rosemary, though any form of elder will do, lavender and chamomile, my two favorite sleep herbs, thyme and lemon, along with a bit of ginger. Once you have everything, begin combining them into the bag. Personally, I did about a good three pinches worth of each herb. Elder is a healing and protective herb with strong ties to sleep. When placed beneath the pillow, it can help heal difficulties with sleep and bring about peaceful rest. Rosemary is another healing protective herb that ties to sleep. However, it is also wonderfully purifying. Similar to elder, when placed beneath the pillow, it ensures good rest. However, it also works to drive away nightmares. Lavender, once again, is a protective sleeper among some other wonderful benefits like happiness and peace. It works wonders in allowing for a restful night and even has ties to bringing wishes into being while you dream. Chamomile is a purifying sleep herb and has been used for ages in all sorts of forms to aid with sleep. Thyme is a healing, purifying herb with ties again to sleep. When placed beneath the pillow, it is said to ensure a restful night with a lack of nightmares. Lemon again is added to enhance the purifying elements and keep everything nice and negativity free. I personally would recommend using dried peels if you have any, or allow the peels to dry before use as they may mold otherwise. Ginger works to ensure a spell's success, and I would highly recommend working with this element. However, if you can't, I've had some success with using cinnamon as of late for this purpose as well. Make sure to place each herb in the bag with clear intention, and then once it's crafted, spend another moment with it, infusing your intent and power into the bag. And then there you have it. Place the spell bag under your pillow for best results. If you must, you can also hang it above your bed. If you'd like to add another element to the ritual, I'd recommend drinking a cup of lavender tea before bed. It's really calming and just helps me to get into a nice sleep state. I find it works best from just my personal experience, though I will say it does taste kind of like grass, so it's not that enjoyable, but uh, it does wonders in the energy realm. The smoke cleanse and spray can be done each month for maintenance as needed, and I would recommend exchanging the spell bag every three months. At each exchange, or if you find that the spell bag doesn't really serve you any longer, I'd recommend burying the ingredients, allowing them to go back into the earth, or casting them away into the water. Either method works, but it just helps to allow the energy to go back in a very smooth way. And that's really that for the ritual. I hope you all enjoy and give it a try if you need to. I've done a lot of work for nightmares for myself and other people, and honestly, I find that it's really important to add a banishing element, uh, especially if they're a consistent problem. If you were just having nightmares here and there, it's most likely not an energy issue, but if they are really a part of your daily life or nightly life, uh, there's probably an energy imbalance, and it's important to clear that space. Plus, making sure that energy is pretty strong and solid doing the uh, monthly checkups on it and exchanging the spell bag every now and again really does make a big difference. Like I said before, you can exchange some ingredients, all that information will be down below, and I hope that this helps some of you. These are my favorite spells to make, and if any of you have some concerns that you'd like me to address with rituals and spells that I believe I could help with, I would love to create more videos in the future on things like this, so uh, please let me know what you are seeking and I will see what I can do. And the dogs are playing in the background, which is probably my cue to close this out, so thank you so much for watching. If you haven't checked out my other channel, I would recommend going and watching it. It will be linked at the end and down below there I share more of the daily magic and vlogs. And if you can and would like to, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon. There I share my art, herbalism, herbal profiles, all these other fun things. And it's really what keeps things running over here. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a lovely day and I look forward to seeing you soon.